a new single, Restless Love. Yeah. You can listen it you can listen to it now. It's on every streaming I platform. I think mm-hmm. Restless Love is better than It's You. I from I'm the man like, himself. You be the judge, right? So in the States, if you want an idol, they mm-hmm. say, you're going to Hollywood. Yeah. Right? In Indonesia, you're going to Jakarta. Yeah. Singapore, what, what do they say to you? You're going down the street. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Budak Rupia? Ada Alfi di sini. You're watching Vineyard, and I am welcoming society to the hey, cave. What's up? What's up? We call this a cave. Cool. Yes. I've never been in a cave. So this, is nice. <laughs> this is not an actual cave. <laughs> Tapi yeah, kita bilang ini the cave. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> society, hmm. welcome once again. Thank you. How are you today? I'm good. Thank you. Mm-hmm. On, a on a ini human level. On a human level. Ini udah 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 hari keberapa di Jakarta ni? Hari ketiga. Mm-hmm. Hari ketiga. Yeah. Terus udah ngapain aja nih? Uh, interviews oh, pasti um, capek ya lelah rekaman ya. Mm-hmm. buat TV uh-huh. um, but man mostly I miss Indonesia so much dude really yeah why I spend a lot of time here actually. yeah dulu uh, yeah. Uh, I know that you uh, make music here juga yeah, yeah, Bandung yeah. the past 10 years Bandung Jakarta yeah. yeah I spend a lot of time here so it's like over the pandemic it's the longest time that I've been in Singapore mm-hmm. in 15 years Oh, really? Yeah, because usually berapa bulan gitu, every few months I will come to Indonesia and uh-huh. hang out with my friends, make music, so, you know. Eat. People here in Indonesia, mm. they go to Singapore. Yeah, it's the it's opposite for me. We, we get so excited. Yeah. National holidays, we go to Singapore. Yeah. Long weekends, we go to Singapore. Yeah. That's that's what you I, do. I get really excited when I when I hear someone speak bahasa in in Singapore. <laughs> Why? Because it's like ah, Indonesian, cool, <laughs> you know, and it's everywhere like. So people in Indonesia, they go to Singapore for the food. Yeah, they go for uh, uh, the large sidewalks. Yeah, yeah. So we can the walk. Sidewalks there. are large. The sidewalks are very large in Singapore. Singapore. Is for walking. It is. It yeah. is. So we go there for walking. We go there for Universal Studios. Yeah. We go there for basically in everything. We go there to casinos. Yeah, shopping. Shopping, of mm-hmm. course. What do you do uh, when you come to Indonesia? Makan. Uh-huh. Makan sate. Makan sate. Makan. Uh, it's like we have slightly less good version of Indonesian food in uh-huh. Singapore. And because my, my family is from Indonesia, uh-huh. so I grew up with a lot of in Indonesian food. Mm-hmm. Jadi, it feels like whenever I come to Indonesia, I get to eat the full, the full on like experience, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I'm always so excited to eat like the same thing. We have the same things back in Singapore. Mm-hmm. But it's just much better here, you know. Like it's the yeah, or, yeah. the original. So I well, we don't we don't we it. don't have uh, that good of a uh, hawker chicken rice here, though. Really, it's so hard to find one. Yes, yeah. So hard you're to not find that one. good at bland food. No. Yeah, but no. Sing- Singaporeans are really good at the not so salty food. Where like the balance is slightly low. It's like people, the government. Like, yeah, the government We're actually about the government now. Okay. No, no, really, the because the government subsidizes the hawkers uh-huh. if they add healthy options. Oh, yeah. So we are encouraged to eat less, like MSG, less. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So if you eat Singaporean food, you'll start to understand that oh, it's slightly less, um, it's slightly less salty. It's yeah. Slightly more healthy. Yeah. I think it is. So we're used to that kind of flavor, you know? Yeah. Right? So yeah. once you go, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just get, in I, the middle. I get what you're talking. <laughs> about. I get what you're talking. About. Yeah. So I love. Uh, hawker rice. Uh, uh, chicken, chicken rice is the best. It is. And the thing about chicken rice in Singapore is that people always ask, right? Yeah. Mana satu yang paling enak? Nah. Right? You can. So my answer is, semuanya enak. Okay. Like, even if you're in the heartlands in where the residential area, so yeah. where the tourists don't go, yeah. that's where you get the best chicken rice. It's like the hawker center has no name. The uh-huh. hawker has no name. You've never heard of it before. But the Malah chicken yang rice gak terkenal good. gitu ya. Yeah. The not Tapi so yang, famous yang ones. terkenal juga enak juga. Yeah. But for me, I like those like, because it's near my house, you know? Yeah, <laughs> like yeah, yeah. I don't have to go to the famous place. Yeah. I just go downstairs and get any sort of chicken rice. It's still above, it's still above average. It is, yeah. yeah. So you don't do sports? Uh, I do sports. What? I used to. I used to play football in the school team. Mm-hmm. Uh, bola sepa. <laughs> uh, I used to be in the, I, I don't know if you know floorball. Mm. It's like hockey, but with plastic sticks. <laughs> it's like indoor hockey. In our hockey, I played yeah, in our so, hockey. So I played, I played floorball, uh, and then um, I don't know if it's a sport, but I played Dota. <laughs> Dota <laughs> that's too. That's an esports. Yes, I'm, that I'm, is an esports. I'm into esports a lot. 
Okay. My favorite one of my favorite teams is an Indonesian team called Boom Esports. Boom Esports, yeah, yes. Like, really boom, shout out Boom Esports. Shout out yeah. Boom Esports. Boom Esports, amazing. Okay, Dota. Dota, Dota 2. It's my life. It's my life. It's my religion. Yeah. <laughs> Number two after music. Number two after music. Dota. Dota two. I actually, for my honeymoon with my wife, <laughs> uh, in 2018, we went to Vancouver to watch the Dota 2 International. Did you really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I really did. It was so, it was crazy, man. Because I, I grew up playing video games, right? Okay. And so I've had- So besides music, I, I know you played music since yeah. such an early age. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. So besides music, you also play- Video games. I'm video hard, games. Hardcore, yeah. Pretty hardcore. So you're 35 right now. Yeah, I'm 35. 35. Uh, what kind of music? Well, what kind of video games did you play back then? Was it a I Sega? Had, was it a PlayStation yeah, One? I had I had one of the Sega cartridges. Uh -huh. Um, I had an Atari. I had I had a PlayStation One, two, three, four. Yep, the no, five. No one? five yet. Okay. Sony, if you're watching. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Sony. Uh, it's a bit hard to get, but uh, help you promote your. your hey, console. they're making mass productions right now. They they they're gave trying. an announcement. They're trying. Yeah, 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 yeah they're yeah. making mass productions for the PlayStation Excited. Five, so we don't need no push or raffles they, anymore. They have they have like the colored ones now. Yeah, it comes in purple, pink, like. Did, uh, did they really? Yeah, yeah. They're it's going cool. To, yeah. Oh, okay. It's pink, purple, pastel colors. So it's everyone's cool. everyone's gonna get a PlayStation Five pretty soon. Yeah, hopefully, including you. You're gonna get hopefully. one for free. I hope so, Sony. Because yeah. you're with Sony. My label is Sony. Because <laughs> yeah. yeah. you're with Sony. Can you imagine yeah. that? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout yeah. out Sony once Shout again. Shout out Sony. Give this guy a PlayStation 5, 5 right now. <laughs> he needs one. It's his religion. Yeah. So I have a question list. Yeah. Sent by my producer. Sure, go through it, man. So, no, I just want to go through it one by one. Okay. So it says, question number one. Mm. You're 35 years old right now this yeah. year. I just turned 35. Happy birthday. Thank you. Uh, does anybody ever call you a baby face? Because the first time I... Before I research you, yeah. Before I know you, it, you don't look thirty five at all. Yeah, I wonder why. Um, I feel thirty five. <laughs> it's a though. gift, actually. <laughs> I feel thirty five. I think you don't look thirty five though. Thanks, man. Yeah. Uh, moisturizer. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I swear, guys. I swear. Skincare is important for I guys as well. I swear. I just noticed that I this year during yeah. the pandemic. Yeah, uh, guys are starting to take more care. Yes, of yes, yes, yes. I use toner now before I go to bed. Yes. It's moisturizer. Yes. You have Cleanser, that. toner, moisturizer. I, I just bought mask a beauty once serum. So serum. I, yeah, I, I mix with the, when, the moisturizer. When a guy does serum, yeah, he's a serious guy. Yeah, he's I just serious. started, but I, I just bought serum. Happy two for you, days ago. Serum. Thank you, man. Thank you, man. Whenever a guy tells me he goes yes. for serum, that's. Do like, you use serum? Ser I use serum. Yes, I yes, yes. love serum. <laughs> I, use, yeah, I love serum. Yeah, serum is probably the most expensive thing in that lineup. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, so it is. it's like especially the good ones. Yeah. Blah. Yeah, exactly. so expensive. So, so yeah, thirty-five years old, serum, toner, yeah, cleanser, yep, mask once in a while. Yep, you know, yep, take yep, care yep. because when you take care of yourself, yep, it feels like you are the one who's worth it. You know, yeah, yeah, like yeah. you spend money, but on yourself, yeah, yeah, it makes you feel like you're worth it. Yeah, and yeah. I think that's a very important way to feel. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. you know, when you do uh, skincare, you look. You look good. You yeah, feel you more. Feel good. Yeah, 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 yeah. You lose a bit of money, but you know, it's, it's, it's an investment in your <laughs> your health, especially in this industry. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Well, you use the visuals and stuff. And I used to be pretty lazy about it, you know? Like yeah, I was yeah. super lazy. Blah, 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 blah. So what's the, what's the biggest difference uh, from uh, 2009, you won Singapore Idol, mm. till now, in terms of looks? In terms of looks, I think at the start in 2009, um, I had just got, kind of got kicked out of music school. Mm -hmm. And so for, for many years, um, I was very focused on that like music life. Yeah. Like every day is music. 10 hours a day, you know? Because I, so, I saw your interviews before I uh, I know that I was going to interview you. Uh, the, then the guys told me, I have, to, I have to research about you first, right? Wow, cool. Thanks. Yeah. So then I went to YouTube. I searched your name. Mm. I went to the oldest interview oh, that I can God. get. It was with a man called Daud Yusuf or something. The thick, the thick is it? So that was, wow, that was crazy. So the story is- um, You were wearing glasses and you don't have any hair. Yeah, dude. The reason, okay. I'm going to tell you the reason okay. why I don't have any hair. Okay. So the story is when- Is it a funny story or a sad story? I have to brace myself for it. It's so sad, it's funny. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so the story is, uh, waktu Singapore Idol, yeah. um, after I, I didn't expect to win. Yeah. Because so, semua anak Singapura, we have to go through this thing called national service. Yeah. So dua tahun dalam militer. Oh, wajib militer wajib. di sini, di Indonesia bilangnya. Wajib juga? Ah, yeah. oh, no, 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 no. Okay. no, no, no. Di Singapura semua wajib. Di sini, hmm. orang ramai-ramai ingin. Yeah, really? Yeah. Why? They, they they compete to join the military. 
Why? Anyway, okay. No judgment. <laughs> uh, so, wajib militar di Singapore. Well, so, it's a good thing for me too. I don't want to go to. <laughs> when I was doing the idol competition, I got uh-huh. a letter. Uh-huh. Say, because I've deferred once for, for studies. Uh-huh. And then I can't defer anymore, right? Okay. So during the idol competition, I got a letter saying that I have to enlist in January. Mm-hmm. And the idol finals was like 27th December or something like okay. that. Okay. And when I won idol, I did the. I was like, ah, uh, everybody in the comments, right, was like, oh, he's so pious, like he's praising God and stuff, right? <laughs> But actually, I was like, oh shit, I have to enlist into the army. Like, <laughs> that was my first thought. In front of like 10,000 people at the stadium, right? Oh, so won. you want idol? The moment, like, I want yeah, idol. So yeah. the moment the you know the confetti the came out, yeah, and yeah, I was like, yeah. pa, pa, pa. I was like, shit, I have to serve the army now. And so that was why I had to cut my hair bald. Oh. And that interview uh-huh. was two weeks after I enlisted into the army. Ah. So I was in this like, where am I and what am I doing here? You yeah. Know? So yeah, it was a little weird. <laughs> It is. So after I saw the interview, I couldn't get anything out of it. Yeah, I don't understand don't. a single bit. Is in Mal- in Malay? It's in Malay. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I watched 15 minutes mm. of both of you talking. Yeah. But I didn't get anything out of it. My Malay is really bad. <laughs> is it? <laughs> yeah. It's I couldn't bad. tell because yeah. I just, I can't understand Malay at all. Yeah. So uh, 35 years old mm. right now. You won Idol back in 2009. Yeah. Uh, long, time. long time ago. Long time. Mm. So in the states, if you won Idol, they mm. say you're going to Hollywood. Yeah. Right. In Indonesia, you're going to Jakarta. Yeah. Singapore, what, what do they say to you? You're going down the street. <laughs> <laughs> there's a there's a there's a ferry bus. You get in the bus. You're going down the street. Here's your golden ticket. Yeah. So the reason why <laughs> you're going down the street. <laughs> just the reason why I got the a, Yeah, exactly. It's so nearby, right? But uh, actually, the reason why I think I got a bit of attention during the idol thing yeah. was because when I went for the audition. Yeah. I don't know what got into me, right? But the first thing I said was, I'm not related to Najib Ali in any way. Okay. You know Najib Ali? There's this no. really famous no, guy no, no, in Singapore. No, no, no. He was the host of Asia Bagus in, okay. the, in the 80s, 90s. Okay. Like, it was a very famous like regional show. And he looks really, I really, really look like him. Uh-huh. So everyone, they used that clip and they put it in the, it's like, Najib Ali look alike. Oh, so everyone the, calls do, me. During the, the yeah. audition. Yeah, so I look what, like what, a, Which they put out to the television. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I look like a really famous Singaporean host. Okay. Yeah. So that's why you get yeah. all the attention. Yeah, if you Google Najib Ali, you'll see like he's the oldest. I'm gonna Cesare. Google Najib Ali right now. Yeah, Google Najib Ali, and you can show you can show the people how he looks like. I will. He wears glasses. He's pretty tall. Najib, Najib with a B with a P with a P. Najib. Yeah. Najib with a B is saved for Najib Razak, the Malaysian Prime Minister. <laughs> <laughs> with a it's P. Najib, is this this guy? Yeah, and that look like me. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he used, he wears hats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I used to wear hats also. So, like, yeah. <laughs> so that's why you got all the tension. Yeah. Today. Lucky me. Yeah. Lucky you. Lucky you. Uh, what I noticed from all of your in- interviews too. Cheers. Uh, 2009 mm. and then 2010, all the uh, CD stores are going out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it just started your career. How was that for you? Bad. Yeah, I, don't know. <laughs> I started my career during the death of CD sales. Yeah, you, just on the verge. Yeah, yeah, so it was it was such an exciting experience because I was recording that first album. Yeah, um, while I was in the army. So when you're in the in the army, uh-huh. they ship walk me you. through because I would never. Okay, so you have to spend two years in the army, right? Okay, the first three months, tiga bulan yang pertama, they will they will um, they will send you to an island. Okay, it's called Pulau Tekong. Singapore? Yeah. Okay. In Singapore, it's like a night ferry dalam 20 minutes. Okay. Yeah. So it's like an island that is like military island where okay. they train recruits. Yeah. Yeah. So you get shipped off to Pulau Tekong for the first three months mm-hmm. for your basic training. After your three months, they will send you to a different vocation, meaning you can go to the art- artillery or infantryman or yeah. like. Um, after three months, I went to the music and drama company. Oh, so what I did in military. <laughs> I'm lucky, dude. I'm so lucky. So I I went to audition and stuff. I said, mm-hmm. please take me. For my two years in the military, where people people were like in the jungle <laughs> doing doing stuff in the jungle, right? I was singing for like the Sultan of Brunei. <laughs> I was like singing. I was like doing all these performing for delegates and and like it was tough. It was really tough. Yeah. Uh, because our schedule was really packed. Mm-hmm. But that was that kind of reminded me of music school too because mm-hmm. every day we we wear our uniforms yeah 
And then we do roll call. Yeah. And then we go to the studio and practice <laughs> <laughs> in your uniform. But, but you do that for your, your country. Yeah, but you do that <laughs> for my country. Yeah, for Singapore. For Singapore. And then, um, yeah, that was kind of my two years. I spent yeah. two years in the in the military while trying to record my first album, while trying to start my music career, while trying to, yeah, all that stuff. It was like a... Puting beliung. Put, is that what you call it? Angin puting beliung. Angin puting beliung. Yeah. 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 But you're but you're doing this all of this right now. Yeah. No, the thing is, in Singapore, uh-huh. there, ha- there has been three seasons of Singapore Idol, uh-huh. right? And that was in the third season. Uh-huh. And the first two winners were Malay guys. Uh. And I'm a Malay guy, if you haven't noticed. <laughs> but so the third season, everyone was like. We're getting Will we move? have a female winner? Uh. Like all the ads were like female, female, and I look left, I look right, and all the contestants were female. Females. And I was like, yeah, let's just vibe it out. You know, <laughs> I don't care about winning or whatever. It's obvious that you want a female to win. Yeah. So in the psyche of the general audience, it uh-huh. was really like, yeah, we want a female to win. And then when I won, everybody was like, not another Malay guy. <laughs> you know, and what, what happened to the the, to the past winners? Um, so the first winner, Taufik Batisa. Uh-huh. He uh he had a pretty successful career in Singapore Malaysia. Mm-hmm. Um, the second winner Hadi Mirza he became the Asian Idol. Uh, oh yeah. Oh. And then um that was Mike Mohedi time. Yes yes yeah. yes 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 yes. Some peace. Um, mm-hmm. and then yeah I was the third winner and it was kind of like in the newspaper it was like third Malay male wins. <laughs> it's like it's always about that. Yeah. It's always about the race thing for me. Oh that was really. I hard. got really tired of it man to be yeah, honest yeah, yeah. yeah I was like. And everywhere you go, people see you in this way, you know, like, oh, oh that's the winner. That's the guy, yeah, that's you know? Guy. And I got tired of it after a while. Uh-huh. And um, I just really wanted to focus on the music, you know, yeah. and not like the drama that comes with winning the idol thing. Yep. So for the longest time when I was an indie artist, I told every event that I went, I told people not to say that I'm the Singapore idol. Like when I did shows in Malaysia and yeah. stuff. But now like, it's... Yeah, now it's... I don't know. Now it's different because... I think because people know me for my songs more yep. than they know me for yep. the drama. Um, and I, I like where things are And you are have now. to go, you have to go to, through a couple of, year, of years of that during when you were the yeah. army. Yeah. It was, that was hard. It was tiring. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was very tiring. And I think only now do I realize how tiring it was, you know? Because when you're young and you're doing a lot of things in entertainment, you're just doing and doing and doing. You're collabing here, you're performing here, you're recording here, and you're not, you don't have time to kind of sit down and process everything that's going on. Yeah. Um, but now in hindsight, it was a, yeah, it was a pretty crazy time. Yeah. Well, good for you for Thanks, being man. here right now. Thanks. Uh, so many people can't survive yeah. after they finish uh, Talent Show. How did you overcome it? Did you, do you think, do you survive? A little bit. <laughs> I think the key really is to kind of shake off the Talent Show stigma. Uh-huh. somehow or some way you have to try to do that because you will always be associated with the talent show that you're from mm-hmm. until you release something that takes over all of that, you know? And I think you just need to strive to be like your best self mm-hmm. and show people your, your personality and what you're really like. Yeah. Because when you're on a reality show, people have a perception of you and people think they know you in a certain way, you know? When, when they just hear you talk for like, 30 seconds after the song, you yeah. know? And they have this impression of you that locks in. And I think your job as an artist is to kind of unfold yourself, you know? Yeah. Let people know who you really are through your music, through your interviews, through your through your actions, through yep. your social media, whatever it is. Yep. Just, just be honest with who you are as a person yes. because then you don't have to pretend. Like, I think I see a lot of people being tired of social media because they're being someone they're not, you know? You're just being, you're living this life that's like, hi guys, and this off, and you're like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And so sometimes it's necessary. It's like a necessary evil, right? It but is. It, it will really sometimes eat away at you. I'm on the radio mm. right now. Sometimes when yeah. I get after a talk set or a cut, yeah. that's what I do. Yeah. Hey, what's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? I'm gonna play the song yeah. for you. It's a sorry, it's you. Yeah. Oh my God, sorry. Because it's tiring. You it know? is. It's tiring being that all the time. Yep. So it really drains at you. So I think wherever wherever possible to be yourself, be yourself. Yep. When it's possible to be yourself. I when think. it's possible to be yourself, be yourself at 100%. Yeah. That's right. So, and you're here right now. What do you think break the stigma of your uh, mm. Singapore Idol uh, name? I don't know, man. 
I think it might be It's You, mm-hmm. the song. Um, and that took a while. Yep. Um, but also, I don't know. I think, I really don't know what it is, really. Mm-hmm. I really don't know what it is. But it's also time. Yep. I think time has passed. And You've been pretty consistent with uh, your yeah. work. Yeah, I've never stopped releasing music. I think yep. even if there are like some gaps in between here and there, yep. I don't think, yeah. I don't want to stop releasing music, you know? Yeah. It's the process of it. It's just, I think there's nothing more exciting to do in life. Than music. For me, yeah. yeah. The process of, of writing, of collaborating, of like arranging, going into the studio and like picking samples and recording instruments, like, doesn't that just sound like the best thing ever like, yeah. to me, you know? Yeah. And so, I don't know. I feel like in the modern day, mm-hmm. there is no such thing as time running out for artists mm-hmm. because there's just so much avenues for you to do so many different things. And so I think now I'm in a good place mentally to kind of absorb that, you know, because I've always thought that by the time I'm 30, I won't be able to do this anymore. And I always, that, yeah. Yeah, I always thought that success is too late. It's, com- it's going to come too late. I'm going to get old. My hair is going to go gray. I'm going to lose hair. I'm going <laughs> to, whatever it is, right? And so I've, I've had this like really negative impression of music yeah. for some reason. But I think with the success of It's You and the amount of people telling me how m- exactly much they love. I've never had that before, mm-hmm. you know, because... In Singapore, your population is 5 million. Yep. And as much as you can, you try to reach out, right? As much as you can. And so just the just the mathematics of it doesn't really work in your favor most of the yeah. time. You know? But I get a lot of message from a lot of Indonesians telling me like how much they, yeah. yeah. And it's funny because I, I feel like when I was an independent artist, I really started my music career here. I went to Bandung first to yep. like look at music producers hang out with people there. Because I feel like, I feel really at home in Bandung. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's nice. I, when I was in college, I used to go to Bandung <coughs> all the time because I had friends in college oh, in Bandung. Oh, Bandung itu adalah kota pelajar. Yeah. So, yeah. So kota. I had a lot of friends in yeah. college in Bandung. So every time the summer holidays or whatever, yeah. like me and my friends from Singapore would go to Bandung. Okay. Party, relax, you know, yeah, makan. Yeah, yeah. Enak sih yeah. makan yeah. Bandung. Enak, enak. enak, 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 enak. enak. Dope. And cuaca di Bandung is like, oh, it's pretty compared, good. Singapore is really warm. Singapore is like as warm, if not warmer than <laughs> And because Singapore is all tall buildings, you yeah. Know? So it's like <clears throat> we have a lot of trees and stuff, but it's still really, really warm. Yep. But in Bandung, man, like the weather is perfect. You know, it you is. Wear a shirt and it's it like is. cooling. It's not too cold. At, at night you can wear your hoodie. Yeah, I'm. I'm not good with cold. Yeah. Oh, yeah. you're not. I'm very bad with cold. Okay. So Bandung is like perfect. It's not perfect. cold. It's not warm. Yeah, it's, it's not cold. It's, it's not warm. In the middle, right perfect. there. Perfect. The people are so sans, you know. Like, yeah, sans. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's just the people are the so vibe. sans. And because it's such a stark difference from Singapore, where everybody's serious. Yeah. You know, everybody's serious. Everybody wants to hustle, be out yep. there. And I, I just want a sun time, man. <laughs> it's in my blood, you know. Just like when I go to Bandung, <laughs> it's like I feel like. Well, what, what did you learn, sans? When? A while ago, I guess. A while ago. Yeah. It's a while. I I I can speak a bit of Bahasa. But only after I've been here a couple of days, a week, or two. Yeah, then, you get used to I people. Like, yeah, you get used to people saying slang words. No, because you know the words. Yeah, like I know it's the words. It's just hard to put it out there. Yeah, I just Sometimes. forget. Like because you speak the same version, a different version of kind of the same language. Yeah, and like it's just you have to recall the vocabulary. You know? Yeah, and when I speak to my Indonesian friends. And they say the words. I'm like, ah, oh, oh, I know, oh, I know. Wow. And I'm installing yeah, yeah. the patch. So I can use it tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Patch update, you know, like update patch <laughs> 1.5. It's iOS update. <laughs> yeah, iOS update. And just like, oh, within a couple of days, a couple of weeks, then then Bahasa will be fluent again. Uh, ah. Yeah. So, it just takes a, the warm up, the engine. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, we're here also. You're in Jakarta for uh, one reason and mm. one reason only. We're talking about, we're talking about your music. Yeah. Newest music. Yeah. Tell us more about uh, Violets Aren't Blue. So I wrote, over the pandemic, I wrote an album. Um, a pretty de- a collection of depressing songs. Yeah. <laughs> um, I write a lot of sad songs. And so, um, but they never get released. Okay. They're just like a collection of sad songs, right? And so I thought over the pandemic, I was like, you know, I'm going to be honest with my mood. I'm going to be honest with like how I'm feeling. I don't want to mask, do the masking thing anymore and hide. Yep. Um, but halfway through, halfway through writing the album, uh, It's You blew up on TikTok. Yep. It blew up in Indonesia. And it was just a weird moment for me because 
I had spent all this time working in with music in Indonesia, but no one necessarily knew me because like, you know, I'm not really promoting my music yeah. here and I don't do music in Bahasa. So to have suddenly Indonesian people looking at my music again, is just kind of like a full circle moment for me. And I feel like um, kind of, this is kind of what I've been waiting to happen in a mm -hmm. way. Um, so after that blew up, I was like, okay, now I don't really want uh -huh. the album to sound like this. You know, it okay. feels like I want to, I want to have like some hopefulness injected into this. So that, that viral virality of virality. Yeah. The virality of it's you really changed my perspective on things because I really thought I didn't want to do music anymore. Like I was really questioning. He was on the verge of. Yeah. Yeah. I was, I've been doing stopping? this. You know, I've been doing this since 2009. Yeah. And I've been releasing music when there's, from when there's CDs, <laughs> from their yeah. CDs. I remember a time where- Was my, cassettes still there? No, nah, nah, no, nah, okay. no cassettes, but- Forgot about that. It was a, a time where my CDs were going on sale for like 50 cents because, you know, because Just the because. CD shops were closing yes, yes, and yes, you know, yes, like yes. I've gone through all of that. And I, it was, it gets really tiring, you know, when, yeah. when you're doing, when you're just, it feels like you're shouting at a wall <laughs> sometimes, yeah. you know? And so, I don't know, with It's You, it just feels like all the years that I've been putting into, into this, fi it finally feels like someone is listening. Yeah. yeah when, you, <clears throat> when you grow up in a place like Singapore with like a small population, it's very normal that you feel like nobody's listening to you. It's very normal. You're like, ah, it's fine. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't expect much even. And that's kind of the beauty of Singaporean artists. You know, Singaporean artists, they don't expect much. We're just like, oh, I just do what I want to do. You know, just is that, is that why you reach out to other uh, Southeast Asian countries? Yeah, I feel like there's a lot that we can learn from from people around the region uh -huh. because we have this similar cultures and similar identity. So we approach music in a similar fashion. Mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of the reason why I wanted to like merantau, you know? Yeah, I feel like the merantau thing has always been in my blood. Yeah, yeah I, never I never really want to stay in one place at any time. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not the kind of guy that wants to set my roots, you know? Uh, so yeah, it's kind of more like that Merantau vibe. Merantau vibe, yeah. Mm. So when It's You blew up, was it the same feeling as you won Singapore Idol? Oh, so much better, man. So much, <laughs> so much better. And I don't know, I've always had the fear, right? Of like a song going viral that I didn't like. Because there's <laughs> always like that song that you put in there for, you know, just for the trend or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like that was how I approached my music early on in my life. Like, okay. Because when you're so young and there, it was a time in the music industry that was a little bit confusing also. And people were giving a lot of advice. Oh, you should do this or you should do that or, you know. And, and that's normal for any new musician yeah. because you want to absorb as much as you can, right? So you listen to a lot of people. You, you are open to feedback. But not always, the feedback is not always good. Yep. And you don't always pick the right feedback. Yeah. So for me, I, I had a lot of songs that other people wrote. Um, I had a, I had like all the songs that I wrote were always on the B sides, you know. The songs that uh, I wrote were B sides, like, oh, Cesare, we don't think this sounds like a single, you know. That's and where you put yeah. the songs, B side. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know. For when it's you blew up, it's kind of like, I can't believe this is a song that I really believe in, mm -hmm. and it really worked. It did. And so there are some songs that you just get tired of singing when you sing over and over again. But it's you is just it's a song that makes me really happy because. It reminds me of all the things that I love in the world, you know? Mm -hmm. Like I wrote it, I wrote It's You because during my wedding, I lost our speeches. Yeah, Did so my wife, spent, prepared? my wife spent a week, right? Cause she's, <laughs> yeah, she's, she's a really anxious person. So she spent a week like <laughs> writing the speech, right? And then I, I forgot where I put it. On mm -hmm. stage and we were like, uh, <laughs> So then what happened? It's just like freestyle, man. Freestyle, freestyle speech. Yeah. Freestyle in it. Free, and freestyle wedding speech. Yeah, freestyle wedding speech. So when I got into the studio to write uh, my new EP, I was just joking to the producer, right? I want to write a wedding speech. And he was like, ha, 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 ha. Let's do it. <laughs> you know, it was kind yeah. of that moment where, like, wouldn't it be cool if a song was like a wedding speech? Like a speech. So that's like a background a, story like behind a, it too. Like a statement, you know? Yeah. Like a statement of your love. And I thought like, oh, that'd be cool to do. And my wife was telling me like, hey, you know, she was, my wife is a very data driven person. Okay. Like she's a very analytical person. Mm -hmm. So she is like. So she does everything based on data. Yeah. She's, a, she's so smart. 
man, like if people think I'm smart, it's because of her. Because, you know, like I absorb so much of her energy. Um, but it's, she, she was like, you know what? Ed Sheeran has like a wedding song in every album. Yeah. And I was like, yo, you know what? That's right. And every song, wedding song in his album is a hit. Then we laughed about it. We're like, ha, ha, And then you make ha. it happen. And I was like, ha, 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 let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> then you make it happen. Was, yeah, because it was really the perfect time to do it. Yeah. I had the material to do it, yeah. you know? And I was like, let's let's do this profession of your love, like wedding speech thing type thing. Mm-hmm. And so when it exploded, I was that was that was what made me really happy. It's because this song is about the happiest moment in my life, you know? And so to share it with everybody. Yeah. To That's see a great how, feeling to have. Yeah, you yeah. know, I think as a musician, you always you you do a lot of things yep. with your feelings, you know. It's because you feel something so strongly you don't know how to direct the energy and you direct it in music and you try to as much as you can rationalize your experience in words so that you can get someone else to understand you. Yep. I think at the core of it, that's that's why I do it a lot, right? It's because you want validation and you want someone to understand how what you're going through, you know? Yep. And with It's You, it was like, what makes me really happy is that people people use it as a soundtrack in their daily lives, you know, in, in the way they yep. fall in love. So... That made me. That was why I feel like this is a this is a really great song to go viral. Like yeah. I'm, I'm so really and it did proud went viral. That. Yeah, I'm so it's, proud of that. It went viral. You should be. Yeah, thank you. Should you should be. But now your uh, newest album is out. It's yeah. called uh, "Violets Aren't Blue" and a uh, new single "Restless Love." Yeah, you can listen it. You can listen to it now. It's on every streaming I platform. I think mm-hmm. "Restless Love" is better than "It's You." I from I'm the man like, himself. You be the judge, right? Restless love is better. But I feel like when I when I I wrote Restless Love because of the success of It's You. Yep. And I wanted to kind of divert the, the the sound of the album to not make it so dreary and drab. And so the intentions behind writing It's You and all the good emotion, I felt like I packaged that and put it in Restless Love. And kind of everything, everything that I've learned about writing a love song mm-hmm. in my career. I put in restless love. So that's why I like it so much is that I feel like my career as a musician, I've only got in my in my mind, right? The reason why I keep doing it is because I feel like the new song is better than the last song. Yes, of course. And if you if you ever have that feeling in making something right, regardless of what you're making, cooking, yes, or like Contents, clay or pottery yeah. or yep. content, if you look at what you did last year and think that what you did this year is better. Don't stop doing it, man. Of course. Keep doing it for as long as you can do it. Of course. Because you won't know where that journey will lead you. Yeah. You know? I mean, that's that's positive feedback. Of if course. you are self-aware enough to understand that I am improving. You're actually practicing. Yeah. And that's the hardest time. thing, you know, to admit to yourself that I'm doing good. Yeah. I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Because negative emotions are very easy to, to take over yes. when you're doing creative work. Yeah. And so it's hard to give yourself positive validation sometimes. But if you have that, I think you should just hold on to it so tightly, you know? Yes. Be positive about your work. Trust yourself. And that's kind of what I did with this album, right? Is that I was always so afraid to write sad songs because it's so revealing, you yeah. know? It's like, I don't want people to know that I'm depressed. Because <laughs> you, you wrote know? that throughout the pandemic. Yeah, right? And, and so I feel like this was the right situation to kind of show people that, you know, I'm not always in a good mood. <laughs> I'm not always this it's you guy, you yeah. know? Like, I'm not always like... There's so many levels to to people and there's so many layers to everyone. And I feel like I just want, as my music progresses and as my audience grows with age, I hope that my music can grow with them too, you know? Yeah. So when they get to like age 25, 30, 35, it evolves with, and I think that's the mark of a great artist. Like all the artists that I listen to, yeah. it's like, how do you learn to grow with your audience? Yep. And that's that's like... A lot of people say, you know, you got to do it for yourself and you got to you gotta be true to yourself. But I also, I also think that there's a part of it that the people who listen to your music really influence who you are as a person. Of course. And so as much as you can to try to get them, because you're doing it for them, they are the ones that are going to listen to their, your music and mm-hmm. fall in love, you know? Yep. Like that's the, that's the whole reason behind all of it, you know? And so as much as you can try to kind of understand where their headspace is at too, like mm-hmm. all your listeners and what they like and what they dislike 
And if you can merge that with what you like, I think that's a that's a recipe for success. You know that is. And so right now I'm still kind of trying to figure out, kind of. For the depressing songs, how depressing can it be? You know, like, still trying to <laughs> yeah toe the balance yeah, yeah, yeah. in that. And yeah, I'm still learning as I go. Um, I'm the the thing that excites me the most is I get to do this for an extended period of time. Yep. Because I always thought like by age 30, ugh, no hey, one will want to listen to Cesare anymore. You're 35 you know? right now. Yeah. And over a hundred million people yeah, have crazy. listened to It's You on yeah, Spotify. Uh, moving on. So on every episode, we have a, a list of questions from our viewers. Yeah. We put out on Instagram. Okay. The first question is coming from uh, at... Mehendi Reza. Hi, Mehendi Reza. He, he asked, what's your favorite Indonesian artist or musician? Oh, crap. There's so many. Yeah, I know there is. Not it's not a fair question. <laughs> it's not really a fair um, question. Okay, I can I can share with you who I've been listening to recently. Okay, and who is that? I've been listening to a lot of Petra Sihombing. Oh. Yeah, I, wow, he's, he's dope. Dude. Yeah, he I, is. I love his vibe. Petra Sihombing. Yeah. Did you know him personally though? No. No. I would love to work with him, dude. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. I just feel Again, like- Again, Sony, make it happen. Yeah. Come if, on. Oh, Petra, if you're listening. <laughs> um, Pe- Petra will be seeing this, I think. Hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> I think his music is really dope. Mm-hmm. I think he, I think his ideas are like not contained to, not restricted, you know? Yep. I like musicians like that who are willing to explore whatever, you know? Um, I've also, I listen to a lot of Sore. Oh. I, uh, my, my, my music interest is really vast. So- Early on in my, when I was in the army, uh-huh. I listened to a lot of BLP. Have you heard of Barry Likumahua Project? Yes. Uh, with Matthew Sayers on uh-huh. vocals. Um, I listened to, I listened to, I listened to a lot of Ran in the early 2010s. And then I became friends with Nino. <laughs> Did so you that's, really? that's kind of cool. Yeah. So that's kind of cool. Um, I listened to a lot of, wow, Pamunkas recently. Uh, ah, yeah, he's been man, blowing he's, up. Yeah. He's been blowing up. He, I, I like his music. Like, okay. His music is very sincere. If you can, if we continue this question, it will never won't stop talking. Won't stop, yeah. So we're moving on to the All next right. question. Let's move on, let's move on. <laughs> because he has a lot of- Yeah, yeah. Uh, I love, I love yeah, Indonesian of, musicians. Yeah, you love Indonesian music, I can yeah. tell. Uh, next up. Ini akan gue baca sesuai ya. Ya, bisa. Ngap Zairi. Yeah. Mau konser di Cipete gak? Cipete. Do you know Cipete? Where Cipete is? Yes. Okay. See, yes or no question, basically. Yeah. Sure, why sure, not? Why not? Yeah, I'd, I'd have a concert anywhere. Yeah. Man. yeah, if you're willing to come and you're willing to listen, I'll be there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so the answer is a yes. Yes. Uh, from at Latifa. Yeah. Tipe cewek. What does that mean? Tipe cewek. Tipe cewek to your uh, type. What's your type? My type. Yes. What's your sp- wife like? I have a very specific type. Is your wife like that? Of course. Yeah. Um, attraction wise, mm-hmm. um, I'm very attracted to girls who wear glasses. Okay. Yeah. I Is your wife wear glasses? Yes. Okay. Um, so that's it. I'm very attracted to confident girls. Okay. Like, you know, girls who walk into a room and just like- I'm the boss. Not just the boss, but very confident with your thoughts. Ah. I'm, I don't have a physical type. Uh-huh. I mean, I'm whatever. But when a person has very strong opinions about what they believe in, mm-hmm. like, you know, when you talk about anything, like if she's really passionate about tables <laughs> and she tells me that the that the measurement of this, like the physics of it, like I, yeah, I'm you're really- Yeah, you're into passionate Yeah, I'm really attra- attracted to that. People who are nerds. Ah. If you're really nerdy about something that you like, regardless of what it is, mm-hmm. right? And when I met my wife, she's uh, she studied to be a chef. Uh-huh. So she was really nerdy about food. Uh-huh. And I'm I'm the kind of guy that I just eat nasi with kicap and telur and I'm fine, you know. It's like, <laughs> fine, Kropo. whatever. <laughs> Kropo, yeah, whatever, you know, sambal, a bit of, you know. And then when I met her, it was just like, every date, uh-huh. every time we ate was like a lesson, you know. It was like, oh, this is taste this way because this is whatever. And then this, oh, this is great. You should try this. Okay, close your eyes, try this. And it's like, do you, do you, do you taste this, this, this? Have you seen like that too? Eh? Yes. Yeah, that scene? Like that. Yes. Like where he eats cheese? Exactly like that. That's my life. Ooh, That's my life, dude. Yeah. Fun. And so if you spend your life with someone who is really passionate about what they love, mm-hmm. it rubs off on you, you know? Yeah. It, rub, it really rubs yeah, yeah. off on you. 
And I think that's something that people don't think about when they're looking for a partner. They're like, oh, I like girls who are tall. I like girls who are loud. I like girls who are quiet. But they're saying to the yeah. to the uh, physical. Physical, yeah. yeah. I feel like mm, the older I get, the more I realize that what I'm attracted to is actually the confidence. Yeah. Okay. So that's that. Answers a lot. Okay, yeah. moving on from uh, my ethics from Instagram. Katanya. Yeah. Kalau jadi musisi, yeah. perlu pintar matematika enggak? Matematika perlu. Okay. Yeah, perlu. Yeah, because music is all, if you've actually practiced, practice, practice uh-huh. you'll know that you'll have to practice with a metronome. Uh. And you'll know that within that metronome, there are bars. Yes. And within those bars, there are time signatures. And within those time <laughs> signatures, there are subdivisions. <laughs> and within those subdivisions, there are, so music is math. Music is math. Music is math. But yeah. if you're a genius in me- math, yeah. does it you, necessarily yeah. mean you're yes. good in music? Yes. I'm bad in math. Yeah, so but, that means I'm bad in music. Not, you're, you're probably bad in math. No, I'm bad. Math. I'm bad. I'm bad. You're probably bad in math because you had a bad teacher. Oh, no, really. such a diplomatic I, I really, answer. I really, no, I really such feel a that diplomatic way. answer. Because I had people who say they were bad in math, but then when they had a really good math teacher, uh-huh. it's suddenly like, you just need someone to explain to you the way you would, and you would want to learn. Because... Mm-hmm. The problem with the world is we we teach things in one way, yeah. but people learn things in so many different ways. Yes, you know. So you're in a class with 40 other other people, and you're learning things one way, and you're expected to pay attention when everybody is trying to absorb it in a different way. Yep. And so I think that's why people are bad at math. Yeah. Yeah. I've been switching tutors though. Yeah. I, no, lot. I feel like a lot of musicians are good at math. They just don't know it. Yeah. Like musicians who say I'm bad at math, but then you're playing a seven, eight time signature with like you know, complicated you know subdivisions and like your body is doing the math. Dude, look at your body. Ah. You know what I mean? Sometimes they don't know what they're doing. Yeah. yeah. You don't know what you're doing, but but your your heart and your body is into it. That's math. That's math. Yeah, you just don't know I've the never seen. <laughs> I've never looked math that way before. The world is math, dude. This table <laughs> is math, you know? The walls are math, you know? There's, these are all calculations, but... Yeah. Oh, so math is Or at least important. that's how I see the world. <laughs> so uh, I think our time is almost up, but we do have- Sorry for talking so much. <laughs> Dude, I love it. It's okay. Makes my job easier. But <laughs> just kidding. It's been such a pleasure talking you. to you. Thank you. Uh, so we have this uh, last couple of minutes yeah. just for you to talk about your newest album. Yeah. What do you want it uh, to be like? What do you want to uh, say to the listeners and viewers here in Indonesia? Saya harap ah. album terbaru saya ini dapat menjadi soundtrack buat hidup kamu. Yeah, I feel like that's something that I strive to. Like every day when I take the bus, because in Singapore we take a lot of public transport, right? Whenever mm. I'm in the train or I'm in the bus and I'm looking at people, looking at old couples, you know, looking at young couples, looking at people on the phone and I'm listening to music. It's like your life is your movie, you know? Yeah. I, I do feel you're, like you're, that. You're your you're own the, movie. Yeah. You're, you're the main, main character, character in your, your movie. movie. And harapan saya memang itu. For people to listen to my songs and so that they can be a soundtrack to your movie. Because when I listen to my songs and I go out and I take the train, like for reference, you know, I listen to myself a lot. Yeah. Like my most played <laughs> artist is Cesare. <laughs> <laughs> because, because I'm very critical of my work, you know. That's, just, which is oh, a good thing. That is a good, good thing. I can make this better. Or it's, it's slightly self-destructive. Yeah. But it's not. It's not yeah, it's not. but I, I think that if... If harapan, memang harapan saya is like, if you can take my music and apply it to your life in any positive way, I think my job has been done. Yep. You know, I think it's really a privilege yep. for me to be in your life. You know, and all these hundreds of millions of listeners that have listened to It's You, I think I feel so proud, you know, to be to be a part of their lives because in terms of my music career, I've sort of been put through everything. I feel like I've done the reality show. I've done the... The recording label thing. Yeah. I've done the indie music yeah. thing. I've done the going to school for music and then getting kicked out thing. I, I'm a music school. I didn't finish music school, by the way. I'm a musical dropout. Yeah. And I've, I've kind of been put through the ringer, right? In all of the senses. And I feel like I'm really proud that every time I feel like I was going to give up, I didn't. And that's what led me here. And... I want that to be a lesson to everyone too, you know? Like if you feel like something you really strongly believe in, then don't stop your, don't hold yourself back from being able to grow in it, you know? Like in whatever way possible. Because 
just now one of my friends was saying like, oh aku juga buat musik tapi enggak publish karena main-main aja. And I'm like, that's important. Yeah. Because you are, it's makanan buat your jiwa, you know, it's, it's food for your soul, you know. And so I feel like every opportunity that you can get to do something to better yourself, take that opportunity, man. Even if the returns are not financial, even if the returns are not instant, that gratification will come because you believe in it, you know. Yeah. And the universe works in that way. I believe in karma, man. I yeah. believe in, if you put out good energy, you'll receive good energy. And it's tiring to put out good energy, right? But it let is. me tell you, man, the rewards, they're worth it. Because whenever you are around people, people can sense you, you know? People feel your vibe. People know that yeah. you do good in your life. Yeah, and I think that's that's something that is unexplainable, you know? Yeah, it is. Yeah, when you, you talk to, to someone it. for yeah, the you, first you time- you just have to feel it. And when you shake hands yeah. and you go like, just that, you know this person is a good person, yeah. you know? And, I, and, and for the rest of my life, I kind of want to strive to be that. Yep. And I know everyone can be that. So of course, yeah, of course, everyone has, everyone has the a little bit of that insight. Yeah. Yes, everyone has the potential. Of course, of course. Okay. With that being said, Zali, thank you very much for being Terima here. Kasih. Terima kasih juga udah mampir ke yeah. the cave. Yeah. So thanks for having me, man. This was fun. It is. It yeah. is. So don't forget to listen to his latest work. It's called it's called viral viral sound blue. blue. Yes. Yeah. Out now on every streaming platform. Best of luck thank on your you, career man. and on everything. Thank you very much. Thank you guys. See you soon. Hey guys, it's Azari. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and tell all your friends. See you soon.